what do they agree on? What do these 40 narrations agree on? That Abu Bakr and Umar uh, flew with Rasulullah in the sky? His birth was confirmed with an authentic chain in Kitab al-Kafi by Sheikh al-Kulayni from Abi Hashim al-Ja'fari who is another Sayyid, a descendant of Ja'far al-Tayyar and those who want to know a little bit more about him they go back to the event that we did recently about Ja'far al-Tayyar He narrates Abu Hashim He says, I said to Abu Muhammad Your greatness prevents me from asking you He becomes shy in front of the Imam He says, Jalalatuk tamna'ni an mas'alatik do you give me, can you get, grant me permission to ask you? He said, Sel, ask. I said, Mawlai, oh Sayyidi, my master, do you have a child? He replied, yes. I said, if something were to happen to you, where should I inquire about him? He said, in Medina. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Wa radhwanullahi ala Abi Hashim al-Ja'fari. Because from what I have seen from the bahith of some of the scholars, uh, and a few ones that passed this narration confirms that the Imam Salamullah Alayhi he is a frequent visitor of Baytullah Al-Haram and Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi and to do ziyara of his grandfathers Aina Makanu Salamullah Alayhi wherever they are the Imam Alayhi Salam he's moving across that blessed earth that blessed land and he is near his grandfather Rasulullah Sallallahu Alayhi Wa Alayhi Wa Sallam secondly it seems that this virtue of Abu Hashim is that if he is to go to Medina, there is some way or in some shape or form that he has a connection with the Imam. Either يتشرف بلقاء الإمام سلام الله عليه he, he gets the honor to see the Imam عليه السلام ورزق الله وإياكم رؤية الإمام والخدمة عند لواء الإمام سلام الله عليه أمين رب العالمين Or is that the Abu Hashim رضوان الله عليه Not only is that it's possible that he meets the Imam and sees the Imam or is that he has conversations with letters between him and Sahibu Dar Salamullah. Now, when it comes to the Shi'i sources, uh, there are made two points that the Mukhalifin, uh, they like to bring up. The first of them being that the Badar or the story of the birth of the Imam Salamullah is from Hakima. And Hakima, you know, she's a woman that is unknown under the, the Mustalahat of the Ulama of Rijal of the Rafidah and you know, nothing is, there are no other narrations about her. And that all the narrations from the books of the Shia about the birth of the Imam are la'if. La'if has said it, la'ifbut. And we see that these uh, points are mainly uttered by one of their big scholars today. And as they say, their Esad. Meow, this is the, the lion of Ahl sunnah people. Meow. <laughs> and that is Uthman al-Khamis, alayhi la'ainullah, that's al kathab and this is what he likes to utter. And Al-Maqda' Mashur, the video of him is there today. And he mentions that Asif Muhsini said that all the hadith are all da'if. Lam yuwathiku. And Hakima is imra lam tuwathak. Okay, let's see exactly how correct that is. Starting with a Sayyidah Hakima. Salamullahi alayha. And this is a woman that must be defended and must be talked about more. But we are Munsafin and we are very honest. We are not liars like they are. Under the mustalahat of very strict rajalists, such as a Sayyid al-Khu'i, under his mustalah, a Sayyid al-Hakima is an unknown woman in the mustalahat of hadith. So what is our response to this? He is a scholar and he has his opinion, and so therefore we have the room to disagree. But we are not idiots like our opponents where whatever they see an opinion from one of their great scholars and they don't like it, but they'll accept it any other day, Oh no, they're rejected. Okay, Methalen, we see that today there are some idiots from the Mukhalifin. You'll see that they will say that uh, they will bring the Mustalahat of Hadith of Ibn Hajar al Asqalani. But another day they'll say that they'll reject him because he's an Ash'ari. Bad. Allah she said we be him. Al Muhim, we have room to disagree with the Sayyid al Khu'i, but we also have proof to back up our opinion. We do not disagree with the Sayyid al Khu'i Sharif because we want to. Sayyid al-Khu'i, he has room for mistake, and we'll show you his mistake here. We read in Bihar al-Anwar by Al-Alam al-Majlisi, Allah Maqamah al-Sharif, volume 99, page 79. Al-Majlisi, Allah ta'ala alayhi, in this uh, page 79 of this 99th volume, he says, the know that under the noble dome, he's talking about the blessed uh, shrine of Samarra, the blessed dome of Samarra, may Allah Azza wa Jal give you all and us a chance to visit that 
uh, blessed maqam of the Imam Salam Allah alayhim. He says, and know that under the blessed dome, there is a grave attributed to the noble, knowledgeable, virtuous, pious, and righteous lady, Hakima bint Abu Ja'far al-Jawad alayhi salam. I do not know why people have not visited her despite her virtues and greatness. She was specifically connected to the Imams alayhi salam, and she was entrusted with their secrets. She was with the mother of the awaited Imam alayhi salam, and she was present at his birth. She would see him occasionally during the lifetime of Abu Muhammad al-Askari alayhi salam. She was among the ambassadors and representatives after his passing. It is appropriate to visit her considering what Allah azza wa has revealed about her virtues and status. And Allah is the grantor of success. Now, as for, you know, there's no sahih chain for the, the birth of the Imam salam alayhi alayhi. This has already been refuted as we presented the narration of Abu Hashim al-Ja'fari radhwanullahi ta'ala alayhi. As for what they like to claim about Asif Muhsini, guaranteed. Warabbul Ka'bah, they have never read Asif Muhsini's book. Warabbul Ka'bah. I swear to you by Allah. And here's my proof for it. Because we'll go back to Mashra'at Biharul Anwar, where he mentions all the narrations of the birth of Sahib Uddam, and listen to what he says here. Mashra'at Biharul Anwar, volume 2, page 208. Listen to this. He says, Tariq Wali al Asr, Ajalallah, Ta'ala, Farajah al Sharif. He says, Al Babu al Awal, Wiladatuhu, Wa Ahwal Umhi, Salawatullah. He mentions the chapter in Biharul Anwar, where Al Majlisi, Rubanullah, Alayh, mentions the chapter on his birth and the narrations about his mother. He says, Fiha, right? Fi, this chapter. In this chapter, how many narrations are there, Bala? Akthar min arba'in ruwaya. 40 narrations. As'alukum billah, ya akhwani wa akhwa. Is this not tawatur? Is this not mass transmission? And then he says, well, mu'tabara tu minha, right? Then he mentions the mu'tabar ones. So, yani, are there ruwayat mu'tabara tu sanad? About the birth of Wali al Asr, salam Allah alayhi, Sahib al Dar alayhi salam. Yes, there is. And he mentions a few of them, and there are 40 narrations. Hatta walaw da'if al Sanad. Even if the chain was da'if, whoever rejects this, they need to bang their head into a wall and get some help. And then Asif Muhsini, he says, Therefore, we must take the result of what the narrations have in common, including the birth of Muhammad ibn Hassan al Askari, Ajalallahu Farajahu Sharif. Ibn Hajar, despite his biased and rigid stance, acknowledged this event in his book, As-Sawa'aq. Ibn Khillikan also mentioned it in his tariqh as quoted by the author in volume 51, page 24. Ibn Khillikan also narrated it from Ibn al-Azraq. So, this tawatur, what do they agree on? What do these 40 narrations agree on? That Abu Bakr and Umar flew with Rasulullah in the sky? No, abadan. It's that Wali al-Asr, Sahib al-Dar, salam Allah alayh, he was born. So where are their claims about Asif Muhsini now? That all oh, he claims that all the ruayat are da'if. هَذَا لَمْ يَثْبُتْ Moving on from the, the stupidity of the mukhalifin, I want to also take a look at the names of the people that saw Sahib al-Dar سلام الله عليه ورضوان الله على الكليني And we pray for him on this evening, on this afternoon, and then every afternoon for Allah Azza wa to be pleased with him and to forgive him. He mentions in a chapter, in the, volume, in the first volume, the names of those that saw Wali al-Asr, salam Allah alayhi, those that had the honor of seeing him. And they are as follows. They are Uthman ibn Sa'id al-Amri and his son, Rudwan Allah alayhi ma. And this is, of course, there are many other people that saw the Imam according to other narrations, but these are the ones that are listed in Al-Kafi. The second being Muhammad ibn Ismail ibn Musa al-Kadhim alayhi salam. And the third of them being Hakima bint al-Imam al-Jawad. The fourth one being Ali ibn Mutahhar, Ibrahim ibn Abida, and Naysaburi, a slave girl that was owned by Ibrahim ibn Abida, and Abu Abdullah ibn Salih, Ibrahim ibn Idris, Ja'far al Kathab, an unknown person that Abu Muhammad al Wajani narrates from, and a few Abbasid policemen, Amr al Ahwazi, Abu Nasr Buraif, who is a slave, a person named Vaut, a person who was named by Vaut ibn Ali al Ijri, and and a few people from Ahlul Madain uh, who Abu Ahmed ibn Rashid narrated from. These are 15 people. And if you want to see more, um, they could be found in a in the chapter of Kamal al-Din wa Itmam al-Ni'mah by Shaykh al-Saduq, where he also lists a few people that named al-Qa'im. I did not list them here because there are over 40 names and we do not want this to be too long. 